Welcome back, everybody, to this episode of a spoiler discussion. I don't know why I said episode, because we haven't done these before. So, Black Widow, it took a while to come out. We can all agree on that. And I just decided, you know, I haven't really had the opportunity since I started this channel to talk about a big Marvel movie. I think the last one I talked about in detail was Guardians Volume 2. So, I was like, yeah, I'm going to talk about it. I'm not going to do a non-spoiler review, because... Everybody who's going to watch this review or my discussion or my thoughts on it has already seen the movie and is just looking for validation in what I have to say that agrees with what they say. So what's the point? But also algorithm numbers and importance are forcing me to talk about this because it's Black Widow, it's Marvel, it's the MCU, it's going to do okay-ish, I guess, but maybe not because I'm not doing a, a video you're not going to see my face this is an audio recording because this is also going up on the podcast feed because i'm pretty sure it's going to be a long one so i want to do this this is going to be i think the staple going forward when it comes to these big tentpole movies and by that i mean things from marvel studios i think things from dc those big dceu movies and probably star wars in the films I'm just going to do this new idea I came up with. I'm also going to be doing this system when it comes to Loki. That is going to be in an upcoming episode of Geek Wave. But basically, Black Widow's here. The movie came out. You can see it in theaters. You can see it on Disney+, Plus, wherever you want to see it. And it's a few years too late. We were waiting since 2020 for this movie. It's out now, and it's an interesting film. So my idea when it came to discussing this film was... I'm going to give you 10 things I liked about the film and 10 things I didn't like. And basically my idea was I could just sit here and tell you I don't like the film or I love the film. But what's the point? Everyone's going to feel what they feel about it. So I'd rather just be like, let's open up a discourse and like, yeah, whether I think it's a good movie or not. And I'm kind of leaning towards... It's really standard, and, and I don't think it's like the worst film Marvel's ever made, and I don't think it's the greatest. It's just more like, yeah, this came out. There's some interesting moments, some interesting ideas, but generally I'm like, the, nothing about this screamed perfect or brilliant to me, which it doesn't have to because most of the comic books I read are just interesting, and I think that's what this movie could be. And I'm definitely more positive on it now than I was when I initially came out of the theater because now I'm just like, yeah, I had some time to sit on it and it's okay. So I have 10 items from the movie and I think it's going to be a fun discussion. I have 10 items that are like, okay, this is good. 10 items that are bad. I do want to say a couple things before I begin. I, I pose my question, I pose this question to myself, I should say, is this too little too late? Like, is this the Black Widow we've waited for like 10 years to see? Since the character first appeared in Iron Man 2, is this the movie we've been waiting for? And I don't think it is. I think there are so many other missed opportunities when it came to this show that it just kind of goes, yeah, let's watch it now. And it, you can watch it in chronological order, which I think would have this movie resonate more with the Marvel timeline. But it is what it is. I'm not going to complain too much about it. Like I said, you know... I've never been the biggest fan of Scarlett Johansson's performance in this movie or as this character just because I don't think it is exactly what Natasha should be and it's more like she's a pretty actress who was kind of cool at the time and we had to be stuck with her and her recent comments I know have a lot of people up in arms about you know liking Joss Whedon and, and talking about his brilliance and all that stuff which I don't want to get into but I will say I think Scarlett Johansson suffers the same fate as Gal Gadot, which is your PR team does not brief you on what you should say and shouldn't say, and everything you respond with is very tone deaf and out of character, and just out of reason, like, it's dumb. So, the Black Widow movie, it is 2021, let's start off with the positives from this movie. There's a few I wanted to get into, like I said, I have 10, these are in no particular order of importance for me, these are just things I wanted to bring up as positives for the movie. So number one, the message. I think what this story is trying to get across got itself across really well, and that is just Natasha's importance to having a family and the importance of family in a world like this. When there is chaos and destruction and anarchy all around you, you want to have those close-knit groups that you can love and be around, and I think this story really went for that. It just said, yeah... Maybe when we started off as a family, it wasn't real, but it was real to Yelena. It was real to, you know, Alexi. 
and how he built on those things was very fascinating because I just believed the family dynamic when it came back into that world. I believed the way these characters acted and behaved. Everything about that worked really well, in my opinion. And I I was kind of going into this like, yeah, the family stuff, I get why you add it in, but it also kind of goes against the other family stuff in this movie, like, or in the cinematic universe, I should say, where it's just Natasha being like, I never had a family till now. And they do a great job presenting how she didn't think she had a family. And then she did. So I I think it's kind of interesting. I I can't complain too much about that stuff. It worked pretty well for what the story was setting up. And I think the message was very clear, very poignant, and it got itself across very well. I thought that was very impressive. So the message worked for me really well. You know, the second thing that I thought was a very good positive for this movie, and it's pretty small because I'm going to also put part of this into like the negative of the movie, but the overhead action sequences and it was very rare that this happened in the movie and i will talk about the action sequences when we get to the negative but there are rare moments in this movie where we just pan overhead and we are facing a down shot on the action taking place it's just like it's like bird's eye view looking down on everything below us and i think that is exactly the kind of tone this story should have went for it didn't go fully into that but i think it just should have encapsulated that type of action that kind of storytelling a little bit more to add that flavor like there was brief moments where we see natasha and yelena meeting again for the first time we had that style overhead some more stuff in the red room had that style overhead and that was the kind of feeling i wanted to have from this You know, I think this film really, like, tonally feels like it's from 1996 to 2005. It's in that era, and I feel like that's a really limited expression, and some of these, like, just editing choices are very of that time, too, and that kind of sucks, but when you just, like, show the overhead shot and we're getting, like, the bird's eye view of all the characters fighting, that stuff looked really cool and just added an extra layer to this movie that a lot of Marvel stuff is missing. So I thought that was just a real, I thought that was just a really nice touch. I hope they can pick up more of that in other stuff with Yelena. I think that could be a great thing to show her character is different than other ones. If that becomes a very Yelena style, that'd be very cool. So the third thing that I think is a positive, and some people might disagree with me on this, but even some of the stars and the creators talked about that, and I think making Drekov a Harvey Weinstein analog is a very big positive for this movie, because say what you will about Captain Marvel, it's not one of my favorite films, but I think what that tried to do in a different way than Black Widow was, girl power is important. I think it did that really well and just show you like, yeah, everyone her whole life has been telling Carol she sucks. And now we are doing that in a different way here where Drykov is just like, yeah, I control a bunch of these young women to like take over the world and they're all influenced by one rich, powerful white dude. And I think just having him play up that role, especially in the current political climate of Hollywood, just makes this story a little more timeless than it would be if we just made him a generic Russian villain. Just because it's like, oh yeah, we can look at this being shot in this time period, but exploring all these opportunities in a new setting. And that was just a really nice thing to me. Drekov himself is a pretty basic villain. I don't think he's that interesting or compelling, but having him just be like manipulating these young women, literally controlling their minds into doing his bidding, which is very Harvey Weinstein. And I know some people aren't going to like that, but it just added something extra to that villain that just made me go, yeah, this guy sucks. Let's not even try to make him likable. Let's just agree that this old white dude is creepy, schmarmy, and disgusting, and we want him to lose. And that was a really cool idea that I'm glad somebody said, let's do it. It is added to that character, and it was very well done, very impressive. And my number four reason I, I think this movie works, Rachel Weiss. Like, I I know there's a lot of people going into this and walking out saying Florence Pugh is the star, David Harbour is the star. You don't get any of that without Rachel Weiss just coming in here and being the mature one in the situation. Like, until she, like, really made her reappearance, I was like, okay, the jokes, the humor, the characters are going to get stale. And then as soon as Rachel Weiss comes on screen again, I'm like, oh, thank goodness, an adult showed up to straighten out all these kids. She really just committed to that role being the neurological scientist type who was very focused on the one thing, not very, you know, like, well, I don't want to say, like, I think more stoic, just in, like, yeah, says the data, doesn't really go depth into it. She had the best accent, too, because it was just the most subtle. It wasn't her 
overly trying. She probably had the most experience. I'm sure she's done like a picture where she's been Russian or something. But I'm just like, she just made it work. And Melina is such a fun, interesting character that she was the highlight to me. I know everybody's going to be talking about Yelena and Alexi, but Melina was the one I went, yep, this is where you nailed it. You figured it out. This is how you got this to work. I love her character. And Rachel Weisz was the best actor, in my opinion. None has topped her yet. And I, I just think having her presence in here made it work. It made it cool. She had some of my favorite line deliveries, just whistling as Alexi walks out in the Red Guardian suit, just being like, yeah, I just broke one of the engines. We're going to fall that like she just nailed it she just nailed everything that performance was supposed to be and she was the best character in my opinion that's probably controversial for some reason because my number five is also talking about Florence Pugh now I know this is going to be a lot of people's first introduction to her but I've seen I think almost every major motion picture she's worked on since her debut Florence is just an incredible young actress she understands what to do every time she gets it. And her Yelena, well, I think sometimes it got a little annoying. It still worked for the most part. And I, I don't think it's going to be as egregious the next time we see her where it's like, yeah, okay, you're doing like these subtle little jokes, but like you probably shouldn't have a personality if you've been conditioned like every other woman in the red room, which I, I, I guess it's just like, yeah, we got it. She's the lead. She's going to joke. That kind of is annoying. But I think she did good. She did very solid. I still think Rachel Weisz was more a character I like. But Yelena just fills that role perfectly. This is definitely setting her up as the next Black Widow, which some people might get offended by. Some people might be like, this wasn't Scarlet's movie. This was Florence's introduction. Like, yes, this was never billed as being Scarlet's swan song. It's just more like she's in a story to set up the rest of her bullshitty universe. And that, I think, is going to make a lot of people upset. Or it's going to make a lot of people go, oh, yeah, Florence is great. And she is great. Midsommar is such a good movie for her. Same with Little Women. Do both performances are just perfect in their own different ways. And both performances I like more than her performance as Yelena. I will say, though, not every actress could pull off what Yelena and Florence did here. So I, I got to commend her for that. Again, Rachel Weisz is just somebody I'm like, finally... There's somebody who's not making jokes, just quietly eating up the scenery and making everybody else look more outlandish just by being the quiet stoic type. That is a little more compelling to what I wanted to see in a Black Widow movie just because, again, it's a spy character. Act like a spy. Don't be making jokes about the Avengers or flipping your hair. That stuff it can work because it's Marvel and people like that shit. But just the quiet, calm perplexion of a Rachel Vice just worked for me and her portrayal as Melina. So my number six here is Natasha slamming her nose to like release the pheromone so she couldn't smell Drykov. That was just a fun moment. And I'm, I know I probably got the wrong reaction from it, but I laughed so hard just seeing the way Scarlet committed to smashing her face on the desk just so she went out to smell him again. The idea of having the pheromones that like block you from hurting Drykov is a really funny idea, and they made it work so well. I, I thought that was a very interesting development, a very interesting idea to explore, and just seeing Scarlet just be like, oh, I thought you'd punch me harder, and then just breaking her nose on the table, that was hilarious. It wasn't supposed to be hilarious, and it was intense enough, but I'm like, that is just exactly what I need from a Black Widow movie. It's those kind of moments that I really liked and I really enjoyed. I also want to preface this by saying this, if you've seen Captain America the Winter Soldier, there is a lot of that movie in this one, including the face swapping, including, you know, the brain manipulation stuff. It's pretty weird how similar those two movies are. I, I'm just like, okay, you guys are doing something here. So my number seven is the chemistry between Rachel Weisz and David Harbour, because those two just made it work. They're just like those old school lovey-dovey parents that's just a little awkward to see them just like flirting and being happy around each other. It's the brain and the brawn coming together in a perfect way. We will be talking about David Harbour a little later on in this segment. Well, I should say the next segment, actually. <laughs> but the way that Rachel made his character likable, I think, is the only reason... Alexi had any good story moments because Alexi, we'll get to Alexi, don't worry, but I just loved the way those two were just like fun. She didn't like care the way he acted. She just like, oh, he's still, I mean, he got a little bit bigger, but you still got it going where it counts, big guy. And I'm like, perfect. 
That's perfect. Those are just two parents who maybe they faked it before, but they're together now and it works really well. I adored those two and their chemistry. It was just really fun. And my number eight, again, this is something we'll be talking about in the bad side, but say what you will about how Taskmaster was portrayed. I know a lot of people have their opinions on this. I I, I stand on a little bit of interesting ways. And for what the movie is doing, I think Taskmaster works really well. Is it my preferred version of Taskmaster? No, just because I've, I've said it numerous times. Taskmaster should always be that joking character. Like, I think people have this, like, cultural expectation for him to be, like, Deathstroke or Red Hood because he looks cool. But Taskmaster is a guy that works at a circus, wears a big white cape, and just tells people how good he is by having the ultra instinct Chad energy of a fuckboy who just can't do anything. He's just like that over, he's just so dumb, but he has so much like expertise that it's embarrassing and he should be a joke. I will say though, the way Taskmaster is portrayed in this movie is definitely terrifying. Like the character, every time they are on screen, it's the silent way they're just looking at the scene, the way they can react to everything. It is very intense and gripping, which is exactly what the movie was trying to do with this character. And I believe that 100%. That to me is a very big highlight of this movie is just seeing, okay, we got the design. It's interesting. It's weird. We're making this look scary. I think that is very powerful. And I like the way that they made Taskmaster in that regard. Is it my preferred version? Of course not. And it never will be. But I think just the way they're like, hey, when you see Taskmaster in the cell, just like curious to see if they're going to break out and attack Natasha, I think that is really scary. Just building up the tension there, just watching kind of like this creature staring at you through like this window and waiting for it to strike. That is very scary. And I think they established that really well. So number nine for me, is something I think is very interesting, and that is the portrayal of the Red Room assassins and all the other women that aren't Natasha or Yelena. This could have gone either way for me. I think that what they did was make it work really well. And I will say it was very Wonder Woman and Amazon-esque, the way they portrayed just like coming together to take down the man. I think it worked better than some cases when it comes to Godot's Wonder Woman stuff. I liked seeing these women. They were all interesting, diverse enough where you're like, okay, this man really kidnapped girls from across the world and brought them here to do some evil shit. And I think that is insanely interesting for the story. And seeing all of them come together in those cool action sequences where you have all the widows together, it looks amazing. It is very cool. And it definitely opens up the MCU to explore maybe some notable characters that we could see be appearing have history in the Red Room. I was thinking, you know, maybe we could see like Echo be a part of the Red Room. Maya Lopez was part of it. Electra could have been part of it. Colleen Wing could have been a part of it. You know, like we're exploring those ideas and I think that's going to be really fun to see. I love what the Red Room set up. We'll get back to the Red Room in the negative, but until then, very cool. And my number 10 stuff for the things I thought worked for this movie and were very good, and I just gotta say, this movie opened up so strong, so my number 10 is the opening scene in title sequence. I love the cover, Smells Like Teen Spirit. I thought it worked really well for the story. It was very cool just to hear that. I mean, the song itself and the way that it was sung isn't that much different than Lord's Everybody Wants to Rule the World from, you know, like, hunger games catching fire and stuff but that title sequence was awesome give movies title sequences again if we're going for the espionage feel do the title sequence because it works really well but that opening scene of just the father coming home in ohio like they're having dinner it's time to leave they're packing up they're running away they're trying to escape on the plane headed back to the country they are from that was intense and if that was the tone of the whole movie i think we'd have something really special I love that opening scene sequence. It's probably some of my favorite stuff in the modern MCU because I'm just like, yeah, this is scary because we we know as people who have like seen the trailers and shit what's going on, but it's like this family's defecting. They're running away from something. The dad's hanging off the side of a plane. You know, the mom's been shot. She's trying to get the daughter to fly the plane. It is very intense. And it is very cool. I really liked the opening sequence of this movie. And again, this is where I'm like, David Harbour is a very good actor when he's given the right thing to do. We'll come back to him. But Rachel Weisz just silently stealing every scene she is in is fantastic. 
So there's a lot of positives in this movie, and I don't think that's a bad thing, but I do want to focus on the negatives and stuff I would say held this movie back, because I can't wholeheartedly like anything, that's just how I'm... It's just how I exist, especially when it comes to my comic books, because I don't think there is, like, a perfect comic. I know people have their opinions on things like The Dark Knight Returns and The Watchmen and all that stuff being perfect, but comic books have always just been great runs, bad runs, good artists, bad artists, great writing, bad writing for decades. And I think that's what we should do with the comic book movies, too. We can accept that some of them are good, some of them are bad. And you got some of them that are just very average and mediocre, like Black Widow. So, <clears throat> here are my 10 negatives when it comes to Black Widow. Number one, I want to say this, and I might get hate for this, but I'll, I'll, I'll stick by it. Scarlett Johansson gave a really bad performance. She did not feel believable in any of the work she was doing. It all felt very rushed and bored, like she didn't want to be there anymore. And it played off like, hey, you should have gave me this movie seven years ago. Thanks for finally doing it, assholes. Like, I now I'm going to make my $10 million or whatever and get the hell out. She ruined a lot of the scenes for me, just basically reading lines and sounding so bored and uninterested the entire time she was on screen. That bothers me, which, you know what, I can't be mad at her for that because you've been doing this for 10 years and finally they're like, screw it, you're finally able to lead a thing yourself. No boys for you to fall in love with, no sexualization, and now they're just like, you're dead, so it doesn't matter. That sucks, I, and I feel bad for her, but again, it's just like, you really looked like you didn't care in this movie, and that really sucks, because you could have done so much more, Scarlet, you really could have. And my number two for the negative would have to be the incredibly weak editing when it came to the action sequences. I talked about the overhead shots being very positive, and those looked really cool. But there's so much fast cuts and just like shaky cam and everything. It's like, this isn't what we want. Comic books are very flat. They're very stylized. And we should try to explore that instead of being like, here's a quick cut every two seconds. So you can't comprehend who's throwing what at who and who's tossing what over where. That's a problem with a lot of these movies. Especially like the, the boots on the ground type of ones. And it just benefited nobody to have these really lazy, really cheap cuts and I it really made it look dated which kind of sucks I'm like wow the message and the idea and a lot of the style of this movie is very timeless but here's some Paul Greengrass looking cuts that are just terrible and incomprehensible at times and that to me is just like whatever which we'll come back to a point later when I get to it about what that could have looked like a little bit better so my number three for something I thought was a negative is why is the red room in a cloud in the sky? That was just really weird. Even if it's just like an idea where we have to like bring down a base. Like I think what I think. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think if you changed a few things over, you make the red room, the base like in the North and you have the avalanche come down there, it would have been cooler. Because that's very, you know, old school spy having an avalanche. But just having to be like, let's go to like an indescribable location in the, in the sky that nobody has been able to find before is really dumb. <laughs> it's really dumb and weak. And I, I don't think it worked or helped anything. It was just really weird and pathetic honestly i'm just like yeah you want to have the scene where taskmaster and natasha are like shooting down the sky and i think you worked around that i really do that really sucked to me because i'm like really a cloud it's in the clouds that's that's stupid that's really that's really uninspired and dumb and number four i talked about it a bit at the beginning david harbour was not a real person his alexi his red guardian I, I understand how some people, and I, I know this makes me sound rude or crass, but I understand how some people are going to look at David Harbour and be like, he's so funny, his character is so funny and cool, and all I could think of was like, this is exactly 
what you did to Dave Batista in Guardians. You didn't make the character serious. You made them the dumb brute when it's not only a portrayal of the character, it's like nothing like how they should be in the comic books. But as an actor, why do you want to be the butt of the joke? And I, I think David Harbour is... I could probably do a case study on David Harbour as an actor just because he seems very, like, interesting to explore. And I feel like he'd feel like he deserves to be the butt of the joke and he'd be willing to do that because it would make people respect him in a very sad clown kind of way but i'm just thinking like dude you could have done so much more and there's just so many stupid jokes making him the idiot making him the fat loser who like used to be good but now he's out of his glory days and i think you could still have played that up if you made him the sad clown where it's just like Instead of him being like, oh, I'm so excited to get back into the Red Guardian suit, it could be like, I'm putting on the Red Guardian suit, I don't fit in it as well as I used to, I'm pissed off and saddened by what my country did for me. That is a little more compelling than just like the stupid dad who can't get anything right, joking about periods and how Captain America is his arch enemy and shit like that. And I don't know if that's a fall of David Harbour or it's just a fall of like, we had to make the dad stupid because it's the women who have to be the smart ones. I don't know. I just think, like, it's going to get old. And you've heard people like Dave Batista who talk about it with Drax, like, I don't like the direction they took my character in, so when my contract's up, I'm done. And I'm like, that's very reasonable. Because if I was you too, I'd be like, I could be a badass warrior, but now here I am just being, you know, the butt of the joke, the silly character who isn't going to get that much to do. And I thought we would move past that by now. But I guess we haven't. So I think David Harbour will be able to tough it out longer than some people. And if he ever got more time to be the Red Guardian, I could definitely see it going in a different direction. My problem would be if we kept up this character the same and surprisingly did a Winter Guard movie, would this be the portrayal of Red Guardian we wanted? Would this be the one that would be leading the elite Russian super team? I don't think so. I'm very let down by that. So... It is what it is. I, I, I can't complain. If David Harbour likes doing it and the audiences seem to think it's funny, that's cool. But I mean, like, I don't think I could do it. I, I personally, if they said, could you do this role? I'd be like, it would break my spirits in a way I don't think anybody would be expecting. And I would just be like, this isn't the a way a real dude talks. This isn't the way a guy who hates his country would behave or act loud, obnoxious and angry. It just doesn't work for me. And I, I think that's that's a negative. So my number five, I kind of talked about it earlier too, is I wish they kept up the espionage feel like the beginning 20 minutes were very good at that idea. The overhead shots were very good at that idea. There's a lot of that to be explored here, but then it just said, nah, let's just stick to the action bullshit, which kind of sucked because if you just kept up that, like, you know, Americans level tension, you know, this, the show FX, the Americans, where it's like, here's some Russians living in America spying on our people and we had to defect them back to Russia and suddenly the world is after these people. I think there could be something a little more interesting there than just being like, let's get the band back together to go blow up a sky bridge. Like, that's really weak. You could have done a lot more interesting stuff there, you know? But, again, these Marvel movies, and again, I, I might get hate for this, but there is a formula to them, and if the formula still works and still gets people to think these are great, then who am I to complain? I am not the target demographic for this, you know? I am the person who... I'm not going to say would prefer the art house film because I do think MCU movies can be art house films. I would just like try to like put a little bit more into that. Like you can pick up any comic book of Black Widow and you get a sense of feeling of this certain espionage spy thriller feeling from like the 60s and 70s instead of becoming just a generic action movie from the 2000s which is what this felt like and it really sucks because of that so i think that is something that really hindered this if you focus more on the espionage you did great at the beginning you did great at the title sequence and then you just lost control the moment scarlett johansson had to become the action star that really sucks so number six for negative i gotta say the accents and this is kind of like, oh, is this going to work? And they did sometimes. They didn't sometimes. It's, you can never get it right. <clears throat> Which I think we should just 
let people talk in their normal voice? What is the harm? We know they're Russian now. So next time, let them do their normal voice like they're undercover and don't want people to know. Whatever. I've just... It was very mixed. Florence did okay. David did okay. Rachel did the best. The rest of them were like, yeah, okay. I don't think... Was there any major Russian actors or actresses in this movie in seminal roles? If there was, they didn't represent it well. (laughs) Like, I just think... Focus, get real Russians to do it. And I know we need the big names because Florence sells more than just the random Russian actress that could play Yelena. But I'm just thinking, like, the accents are going to become the new Sokovia accent, where is Wanda going to have it or isn't she? And that's really weird, and I think it's going to be a disjointed mess, and you're going to have to do a Winter Guard series 12 years from now to explain why the accents are all over the place. So, number seven... Let's talk about this, because it was a very crucial plot detail. Budapest. Okay, so we, <laughs> we set this up in the MCU since the days of the Avengers 1, and we've been talking about it with Clint and Natasha forever, and it's like, yeah, this is exactly how Budapest was. It's like, I don't remember it like being this. and It's like, what? <laughs> you remember killing an innocent girl? That is what you guys are reminiscing about? Like being locked up in a house for two days in a roof and just... Killing an innocent woman, that's a, that's great. And that, to me, leads into my number eight, which is the Taskmaster reveal. Now, I, I said it already. I really liked how they made Taskmaster the scary, imposing force. I think that works for the story you're setting up. It works for, like, the action thing. I think just a smarmy asshole would work better for the espionage feel. But the reveal that Taskmaster is a mind-controlled, half-blown-up Drekov's daughter that Natasha thought she killed in Budapest, it's very very, like, early 2000s. We have to connect it all together and not very Marvel Universe-y. I don't like that because it just, like, makes it all too connected. And I know people are going to like the connected. I just think it's like, yeah, if you just didn't do the face reveal, I think there could be a lot more interesting stuff going on there because then later you could set up some more interesting stuff. And I think we could potentially see some interesting things happening with this character. But as it stands, I think one of the weaker points was that reveal and showing like, yeah, now it's connected to Natasha and this character can never really escape that shadow and become something original later on, which kind of sucks. And maybe it'll happen. Antonia, I think is what they call it. So it is like, it, it does have the name Tony Masters in there somewhere. So it could potentially become more. And I'm not saying it needs to become more. If, it just, if, if this Antonia wants to stay the silent killer, I'm perfectly okay with that. I'm just thinking like, why did we have to show this is going to connect it to Natasha permanently and show like, hey, that innocent girl that probably should have died in an explosion is now this evil bad guy being manipulated by her daddy makes Drekov look like a bigger dick, but just like, that is a very bold choice, and it didn't pay off, and I know there's going to be some assholes talking about how, like, it should be a dude, and it's a betrayal of Taskmaster, it's not a betrayal, it's a character, shut up, you can't betray a character who's fictional, but I'm just thinking, was this a really strong reveal, They kind of set it up throughout the movie, and I'm like, yeah, I get it. But it wasn't that impressive. It wasn't that interesting. It just happened. So that kind of was a weak point for me. Speaking of weak points, my number nine is the end credit scene. I know a lot of people are going to be pumped about this, but I I don't understand. Like, how does Valentina know (laughs) that Clint was there? (laughs) Like, was that something they released to the public? Natasha and Clint went to Vormir. Natasha jumped into the pit. She died because Clint didn't stop her. Very stupid. I I get it. We're setting up Hawkeye. If Hawkeye comes out this year, whatever, it'll work. But also, it's just like, I I know people are like, Dark Avenger, Thunderbolt, I I don't know. I'm still like, Thunderbolts could be cool if you used the comic team from the original comic, because that's the best team, honestly. And Dark Avengers could be fun, but we don't have a real Avengers team that makes them interesting. So I'll watch anything of Julia Louise Dreyfus in it. If she's going to be our next big bad, I will gladly sign up for every movie. 
And if Yelena's going to be a dick to Clint, that's great. Because I, I cannot wait to talk about Hawkeye with you guys because Clint is the character that got me into comic books. He's the one that I connected with out of every Avenger. And I've been so down and I hate, I hate the way Jeremy Renner and the Marvel Universe has portrayed that character because that to me is just so fundamentally not Clint Barton. And as that being a character that I have been emotionally invested in since I started reading comics, the way they betrayed him has really upset me. So this post scene just makes me go, if we're going to see Florence Pugh beat him up a little bit, that's cool. But also, like, how does Valentina know this? If it's, or is it just like a lie? Whatever. And my final piece of negative, I got to say, this is a big one. The movie should have came out like five years ago because it'd have more emotional weight if it was like the movie right after Civil War. And like... It would. It would just work better. It would flow better. It'd make a lot more sense. But whatever. That's neither here nor there. It's a movie that exists. I watched it. It happened. And we can move on with our lives now. And I... I okay. Let's get into this for a second. We're in this era where television, comic books, movies, video games, we have them coming at us from every angle, just spewing their gross affects all over our bodies and we can't keep up with the content we are getting which kind of sucks especially when it comes to these bigger universe pieces that everyone wants to do we watch this one we talk about it for an hour or half hour whatever long this is going to be and we just move on to the next one which sucks because then we're just like yeah this is done and we got the Loki finale this week, and then Shang-Chi comes up, and then what if, and then Miss Marvel, and then suddenly who cares about what these are? And it just doesn't matter anymore, and it's just so annoying. And I, I know people are going to have their opinion on this, but I'll say it now. We have too much Marvel movies. <laughs> we do. And it, with all these movies, we don't have time to resonate with any of them, really. Because then we're just on to the next one, and then it doesn't matter. And then you're just like, oh yeah, maybe Simu Liu is a great actor, but then we're just on like focusing on Richard Madden, and then we got, you know, Tatiana Mislani coming up. And then it's just like, okay, can't we just have a minute to sit with these people? I, it, it, and this feels very much like the, it would emotionally and satisfyingly worked five years ago. And now I'm just like, it's done, it fills in a gap the next thing's gonna, I guess, matter more, whatever, and there's just too many of them, and it's really annoying, it really is, so that is my talk for Black Widow, I, I don't think I'm ever going to talk about this movie again, and that is really sad, because it's like, it's not bad, it's not great, but at the same time, what's the point of talking about it anymore, everyone's exhausted it to death already, and it's been a weekend, honestly, this is the other problem too, where it's like, I put off doing my review two days. I was like, I should do it Friday when I see the movie. But I'm like, I want to give it some time to digest with me. And now I'm just like, what's the point? This video, this topic is already two days old. So who's going to give a shit what I have to say? And I'm just, I we pushed these things up too much in our popular zeitgeist to the point where everything that happens in them is supposed to be perfect and there's perfection and they're the biggest things in the world. But if I'm being honest, I'm tired. I've been tired of Marvel for a while now. And I am a huge advocate of the Marvel Cinematic Universe because it's finally, after years, bridging that gap, sort of, between comic books and film and showing people what we can do. But I also think I can't... This is like doing these things. It really tires me out sometimes. I do my weekly comic book reviews and I'm fine doing them and I enjoy doing them. But then I'm just like, everybody's got an opinion on a Marvel movie and I'm just, I'm just tired. So it, it sucks. And honestly, I don't, I can't even remember the last time I fully loved the Marvel movie or thought it was like brilliant. Maybe Guardians Volume 2. Maybe. And I'm just, I'm just tired. And these things, they just, they just, they just hurt sometimes. And I hope we get to the point, and I hope I can get to the point again where I'm like pumped up to see these movies. And I am excited for Eternals and Shang Chi. I am, but also I'm just like, yeah, let's get it going. Let's just keep pumping these out until the the until there's nothing left to do. And it's it it it's just a lot. 
I didn't think I'd devolve into me literally breaking down and talking about how much these movies tire me and everything, but Black Widow is a very mediocre movie, and the problem with mediocrity in a superhero movie like this is that when it comes out like this, we don't push the boundaries to make it better, and we just rely on every movie to become like this, and suddenly we have a hundred Marvel movies that are just bland, generic action pieces instead of focusing on different aspects of what make the character original in a comic book. You know, and the actors are going to get tired after a while. And when you try to do all this stuff to make it fit into your own status quo, it suddenly loses some of that special feeling and just becomes another hole to put in the puzzle of the tapestry that is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's no longer this original piece of iconography. It is just a film designed to fill time until the next one. And suddenly, you're just like, I got that coming in, and then I got all the Star Wars stuff coming in, and then I got these Disney movies coming in, and then here comes Warner Brothers, and Top Gun, and Jurassic Park, and Fast and Furious, and Sony's doing their thing, and if we get another Bloodshot, and then it's just like, all this crap, and it's a lot. And I think Black Widow was one of, it really solidified to me again, we really are making a lot of these, aren't we? She deserved it five years ago when Scarlett was still interested in this role. But we're just still making these, aren't we? And when I come back to talk about Loki, oh man, I can't wait to talk about that one. So that's my Black Widow talk. That's me breaking down Marvel Cinematic Universe and why it's killing me slowly, softly with its, with its love. Okay, um, you'll like it. A lot of you will like it. If you like everything you've seen from these characters before, you're going to like it. If you like the humor that these movies bring, you're going to like it. If you like Winter Soldier, it's the same movie. If you are interested in seeing a different take on Taskmaster, you'll like it. But if you're an asshole who can't see past a character who is fictional being more than just one thing, you aren't going to like it. It's a solid movie. It's got some decent action that looks a little muffled at times. It doesn't stick with the espionage feeling the way I want it to. And Rachel Weisz continues to prove she's one of the most underrated talents in all of Hollywood. So Black Widow, the movie that is a year too late, five years too late, and showing why Scarlet Witch, and showing why, not Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Johansson, really is tone deaf sometimes, is here... So this Black Widow movie, that was a bunch of nonsense, but I'm not editing this video because I don't have the time or patience. So I'm going to give this movie a 5 out of 10. Now, thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to this on the podcast feed, please give us a rating over there. It definitely helps everything out. If you want to find me in more places, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, and now on TikTok. We are slowly taking over TikTok for some reason. I don't understand it, but widow out, baby. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck. There's no post-credit scene for this video.